Hello there and welcome to the main cave. Now in today's video, I'm going to be showing you this. This is a fingerprint padlock and I'm hopefully going to be answering some key questions you may have about them in regards to using it and if they are indeed secure enough. So if you're new here, we make regular videos on technology for gaming and for your smart home. So please do consider subscribing as we may make a video to make your life easier and I wouldn't want you to miss out. So do hit that subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. So here we have two fingerprint activated locks, both from Bluesafe. I'll leave links down below in the description where you can go and check them out for yourself. We have here the Mirage locks in chrome and in black. Both are identical, but for the coloring on the main part of the lock. So these two will set you back £40 each, and once they arrived, I got straight into unboxing them. Inside you get the main lock itself, an instruction book, settings pin, and a cable. Unfortunately, it's micro USB, but in reality, and as I'll talk about later, it doesn't really matter. So the lock itself is pretty substantial, weighing in at 230 grams. It has a total length of just under 11 centimeters, with the security bars being seven millimeters thick. There's a gap in the middle of 2.8 centimeters by 4.8 centimeters. On the front is the fingerprint sensor itself, surrounded by a multicolored LED. Then on the bottom is a small rubber flap, which has the settings and a port and the micro USB port. The LED ring serves as an indicator for if blue is ready and success is green and then red is a fail. All used when setting up and in general usage. So the first thing I was instructed to do in the manual was to charge it. So I plugged it in and it starts glowing red and as soon as that goes out, it will be fully charged and ready to go. So once that's done, it's time to set an admin fingerprint or in my case, a thumbprint. The idea of this is that this is the one print to rule them all. You can't add anyone's prints without the admin. You can't reset anything without the admin. So it's a quick setup really, dead easy and away you go. So then in reality, how does it work? Well, it's fantastic. Stats are that it activates in 0.5 seconds and it's not even noticeable. Just look at how quick this opens. I would have been incredibly infuriated had it taken time to unlock. So I'm very happy to report it's fast. So another thing I was worried about was the accuracy. And really that's not an issue either. I set up my thumbprint as that's the way I would naturally pick up the way to unlock it. And if my thumb was the other way around or even upside down, it still works. Oh, the only way I found of to it not to unlock was if it didn't fully cover the sensor. So having a print on the edge or just kind of like round the outside, it didn't really work. But is this an issue? Nah, not at all. Of all the times I've been using this in my testing, I've never once missed a sensor and it opened up every time and without only taking half a second to activate, even if you do miss, it's so fast to get it open again. So then once admin is set up, you can now add more people. And this was a, another worry of mine of how many can it add? Well, far more than I need, which is good for those wanting a team of people with access. It can hold 20 fingerprints, all that have to be added by the process of involving the admin fingerprint that we set up earlier. Now to answer another question I originally had is, how easy is it to hack or is it to open? So here's my take. I can't actually find a way to get to open normally, so without any damage. There's no gaps for a key to pick at it. There's no way to override it in any way using the fingerprints. You need two things to even reset it. A pin, which is not that hard to get hold of, and the original admin fingerprint, which is something you can't readily get hold of. So hacking it open, I can't find a way around it. The only way to get through it is by force, and this is being made of strong stuff, it'll be very difficult, so not really desirable for anyone wanting to get through. Now, what about the battery then? Well, it claims to last over three months or a whopping 4,000 operations. I have this on my shed and it will get used only a few times a week so I can see this lasting a lot longer. The lock itself does give you plenty of time with a low battery warning, so you will need to take it off and charge it and temporarily replace it if its security is paramount. But again, here's another question. What if it runs out of battery when it's still locked on the door? Well, the website says just use a power bank, plug it in and unlock it with the, with the fingerprint. Well, that kind of makes sense, really. So I've been using this padlock now for a few weeks on my shed, which is outside, as this is IP65 water resistant and it has some major benefits. 
It's much harder to pick than your average padlock. It has the wow factor, it looks good, and it's just simple. If you want a new padlock and want to pick one up, this will cost you £40 in the UK, and for me, well worth the investment. The only real negative for me was a bit of a mute point, as I mentioned earlier, in that it charges via micro USB. I'd like to have seen USB-C, but I expect I only nearly need to charge the lock once a year if I'm unlucky. From the stats earlier, worst case is four times a year, and that's not really a problem. So there we have it then, a secure, cool piece of tech in which I've hopefully answered your questions in regards to a fingerprint padlock. If I haven't answered your question, please do drop it down in the comments below. That was my look at this, the Mirage fingerprint padlock from BlueSafe. Go and have a look at it. All links to buy it will be in the description below. Please like, please subscribe. Until the next video. Bye bye.